Hey folks, we are finally back with a new episode of Three Men at an Anime. Hasn't been that long. I mean, unless you account for the time dilation with the event horizon. Uh, it's been a couple of months, Eric. It took us two months to do a six, uh, six episode? Twelve, Twelve episodes. Twelve episodes God yeah. damn time dilation. Twelve episodes. Told you. Yeah. Event horizon, dude. <laughs> Oh God! Click the black hole. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean. Okay, we did like time travel in the mean in the meantime, so we are now in the future. We are. It's a whole different year. I'm always in the future. Yeah. Stupid future. It's a whole different year now. We're now in the far distant future of 2019. Hold on, I need to get my leather trench coat. <laughs> the one you usually wear. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so it's a new year. We're at cover and we're gonna be covering Gav's most recent series selection, which is the second season of a show we've already done. Yeah. Because that's terrible that, before. that way. We've done it once before, so. Did we? What was the the other one? We did Slayers next. That doesn't count. All of Slayers is a single gestalt. Also, I totally forgot that we did that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we are doing Season 2 of Blood Blockade Battlefront, otherwise known as Blood Blockade Battlefront and Beyond. Uh, I don't know what the actual Japanese title of the Season 2 is, other than you know, it's Kekai Sensen 2, maybe? I don't know. It's also called Too Many Bees. Hey, as many bees as SSSS Gridman had. Yeah. yeah, too many S's Gridman. That's what I also call that show. <laughs> you did. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Blood Blockade Battlefront and Beyond. Um, this is a continuation of Season 1 of Blood Blockade Battlefront. And there are basically no new characters introduced. No, they just actually give time and space to characters that we had already been introduced to. Uh, that's not true. The Doctor. They introduced one there, new character. There is one or two. Honestly, uh, uh, that's kind of the reason I'm actually glad we did do this season two of this, because quite honestly, this feels like uh, the original season should have been a 24-episode season. And this been, these and, episodes have been scattered amongst the other 12, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. here's the bits they took out. This is basically season 1.5. Kind of, yeah. Basically, there is... The only thing in here I would say definitively is major storyline stuff that would not fit in with the overall story structure of Season 1 is the last two episodes. Yes. Yes. Um, But when you're talking, like, overarching plot and thing doesn't exist really in this. Not really. Yeah, it's largely a bunch of character... Uh, character bits and little one-off adventures, which mm-hmm. is fun and cool and is not at all a complaint. No, not at all. No, no, not at all. I mean, the if you do remember the first one, uh, the only real plot that continues through, and it's not even really a plot as such, is obviously the, the, just the generic settings. You know, it's it's the forces of uh, of Libra policing um, Hell Salem's lot. I mean, there was uh, the ongoing the... thing about Leo and, and uh, what's her name? Yeah, Leo, Leo and his sister. Well, no, yeah, it's season they, one. It, it was it, Leo it and black, um, black and white. Yeah, black and it, it white. Yeah. Black and white again, but it doesn't really linger on them too long. I mean, that was season one yeah. story arc. Season two doesn't have one. It just yeah. White. I mean, just... it definitely takes place after season one because yes. black and white shenanigans are over and done with, and they they definitely would have affected some of the shit going on in season two. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I mean, Femp shows up here and there, um, like in the opening and actually in the, the opening in the end. The end, yeah. yeah. <laughs> As he is wont to do with yeah. giant monsters, because that's hilarious. Yeah. Um, He's not wrong. <laughs> so yeah, um... <laughs> it's really hard without. Uh, I mean, this is the thing. So we've we've covered the characters. I mean, we can talk a little bit. We should, we we there are a couple of characters we can talk more about now, though. Yeah, because yes, there's, that's there's the a, thing. There's a lot more um, depth to some of the characters. Like the the ones we got that. So Chain. yeah, basically Stephen Chain, um, Gilbert, 
and KK. KK, KK. KK. and KK, yeah. Get all, oh, they, and um, Abe Sapien. Oh, and Abe, uh, yeah, right, and uh, Zed. Zed. <laughs> But yes, I mean, like we, you know, the last season we learned about uh, Klaus to a degree. We learned about Zap, and, and obviously the, entire, the the main protagonist going through this all is Leo. So we know the most about him. Um, right. But if you if you did watch the, the listen to the first episode we did, one of the biggest complaints is that there are some characters who we just simply didn't understand. Like Chain was the main one we were, we were asking about. It's like they keep referring to her as a werewolf, and all she seems to do is just disappear every now and again. What the hell's with that? Well, we found she's out what the hell was with that. Although yeah. we're still not entirely we're still sure why, why she's, she's called. It. Yeah, we still don't know why she's a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> but there are apparently other werewolves who can do what she does, which is uh, yeah, par- horrifyingly par- tra- impressive, but not very werewolfy. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's let's dive in. I mean, the the uh, supposedly the 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 trick to all werewolves is not turning into murderous beasts. It's um. Basically, removing yourself from existence. Yeah, and then it, yeah. phasing, phasing out of reality. Yeah, phasing out of reality to a degree where your presence is so minor that you know you don't give off. Uh, you know, you don't. You can't be seen. You can't be detected. You can pass through objects. You um, don't actually they, interact with reality. Yeah, unless you unless you want to. Unless you hmm. want to. Uh, and it basically makes for. An unstoppable infiltration slash assassination force. Yeah, they're not very good at actual assassination. Well, they don't really want to be. <laughs> <laughs> you used fifteen hundred rounds and didn't hit the target. <laughs> yeah, but he's not going to do it again. <laughs> he did it again. <laughs> Now, to be fair, there was no way to know that, that for them any for any of them to know that there was a former member of their squad who had gone rogue, made a deal with it with a with a demon to become even be, to get superpowers to give that give her an ability to take vengeance against the other werewolves. It was actually one of the 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 kings of insert thing here. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was one of the kings. I forget which one it was. Yeah, uh, uh, it was like a uh, king of perception or something, something like that. Like yeah. That. Yeah. So she had super perception powers. Um, she got kicked out of the uh, the werewolf thing for basically wanting to be like, why are we not murdering everything and making tons and tons yeah. and tons of money? Because we don't, that's not what we do. Yeah. Listen, this she... is, all this job does is cover my drinking habit and yeah. all of their drinking habits. That's so all we case, needed to do. <laughs> so in case you don't know, you know, the, the whole thing about the, the werewolves is we go under the radar. You know, we don't want to stand out. It's what we do. Also, you know, the 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 other werewolves had you know didn't want to be murderers. Yeah, that too. But, but yeah, she gets she does a deal, gets powers that lets her basically perceive more than anything you know than any other being ever. Therefore, she can see the werewolves even when they're they're cloaked. Um, does they have to leave some semblance of themselves in reality so they can come back? Yeah, um, and it's yeah, literally. Yeah, I think they, they, they think they have to that um, is like their their link to the world that they always come back for. Right. Yeah, they they stay. They, they need like an anchor in the real world because if they go too far, they may never come back. It, it's basically the plot of Ant Man. <laughs> if you shrink down too far, you can never come back. It's like no bullshit. But yeah. Um... <laughs> but yeah, needless to say, you know. The other, the you know, the the rogue pushes cha- cha- basically chains like, yeah, okay, fine. You you you've tied up everyone else. I'm actually the best at doing this of anyone in the group. Try and catch me, bitch. Yeah, that's why that's why chains the one that works with Libra. Yeah, right. And and chain like goes to like zero point zero zero one mass or something. Or Z- something goes, she like she that. goes so ridiculously far that the person with the power gifted to her by the king of perception can't find her. And chain wins, but yeah. she's, as far as anyone can tell, gone. Her link, by the way, is fucking hilarious. Her link is abjectly hilarious. And I do not want to spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this: watch the episode. It it's hilarious. Um, well, yeah. watch the show. It's yeah, hilarious. Yeah. Watch the show. I mean, this is the thing. I mean, the, the, the whole 
the spectacle of this show is what what draws you in. But then yeah. it is really well written and cleverly, you know, yeah. and clever in its own right. Uh, you know, um, it's a bunch of really likable characters uh, for the most part, except, or except either Zap. likable or insanely entertaining. Yes, <laughs> Zap isn't really likable, but man, he's funny. <laughs> yes, he gets sidelined a lot in this one. Understandably, he got a lot of screen time in the um, yes. first one. <laughs> <laughs> there are times when he shows up and the fight's already over. It's like, oh, well, he shows up to fight and gets backhanded through a wall and doesn't show back up again till the end. <laughs> the number of there's like there's like at least like three episodes where it's like, has anyone seen Zap? Oh yeah, he's in hospital. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what happened this time? <laughs> well, okay. Did he piss Chain off too much? No. Okay. Did he oh, piss Chain and all the? Where... Did he piss Chain and all the other werewolves off all at once at this time? No, there is a one time. episode with uh with Zap in it where he has gets a curse placed on his dick, so he has to find someone's cat as a result. Yes, <laughs> that was a multi-part episode. That was a multi-character episode. It was yeah, yeah, Zap. That, that's just, that, that is a B plot. That's you know Zap just basically he goes through his day again, and it's he he basically spends the night in at the bed of someone else every night. That's just Zap, and. One of the in the, the the bordello that you're sleeping at that night, one of the other girls breaks in the room, she's lost her cat, and he's like, Oh, okay, it's just a stupid fucking cat. So she curses his dick and tells him it's gonna drop off unless he goes and finds it. That drop off explodes spectacularly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because I forgot she to prove that she can do that, she makes the other prostitutes tits explode. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is a thing that happens in this show. I love this show. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's a, uh, yeah. She's a strange one. So the other two sort of plot lines through that episode are, one, Leo basically gets mugged and decides he's going to get his catch back. Um, but without, you know, push, going beyond his moral boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, and ends up getting, basically, Chain, watches, Chain is watching all of this. Well, the whole thing is, is like he, he he's he, you know, because he's always been the little guy in the group. He doesn't, he's not, he's the non-combatant. So you know, he doesn't push back. He doesn't fight. You know, he's saying he got mugged and like they took twenty out of his wallet. And he's like, uh, somebody, the person with him is like, aren't you gonna go like defend yourself? He's like, no, they, yeah, they didn't get anything. Bucks. I have like another hundred and fifty secreted in like a dozen different places on me. Yeah, yeah. he basically keeps all his money like in his shoes, uh, in the lining of his coat, another one like under his collar. He's got, he's got money everywhere because he's used to getting mugged. That actually came up later on this season, actually, after the events of this episode. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, it is a running theme. That, it is. That, yeah, and there's a reason for that, but yeah. Um, basically, he's getting mugged, and the big thing is he's got his allowance that he's going to send back to his sister on him at the time, which is what the... Right. And there, there are... And that's the only reason he's really fussed about it. Um, mm -hmm. There are... And the two guys who mug him are two humans, two normal people. They're just bigger and tougher than he is because right. almost right. everybody he is personally offended that another that humans would mug other humans. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're from what I understand they're, they're basically tourists. They're yep. newcomers yeah. to the city. Well, they think they can. They, they think this place is. They, they think Hell's Hail's lot is like oh, we can totally move in and be be big shots here. No, no, you can't. No, no, no. <laughs> guys, <laughs> that's a. Horrible. But yeah, so as he's getting mugged, he sees Chain leaping by, and he's like, "Oh, great, Chain will help me." And she's go, uh, well, she's probably busy. <laughs> oh well, yeah. So there's that running plot of that. Um, the two guys end up getting into a drinking contest with Chain, and it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's <laughs> like, there's a great scene where like they're at a bar, and uh, uh, well, Chain's you know local bar, and they're they're spending Leo's money. They're basically you know. Spending it in the bar, and and ends up you know he, one of them tries to on chain, and she uh, agrees to their advances if they can beat her in a drinking contest. The second they agree, the bar erupts with bets on chain. Yes, <laughs> and they're like, wait, what? <laughs> I don't know. This guy's pretty big. Maybe he has a shot against chain. <laughs> <laughs> About like three hours later, the dude's in cold sweats and Chain's just like, uh, are you going to drink that? <laughs> it's great. The <laughs> other plotline in this episode is Steven's plotline. Right. Yes. Where he's hosting a party for some acquaintances of his. Uh, he's got a non-human uh, uh, maid who is awesome. I love her. She, yeah, she's pretty yeah. cool. She's just a complete, utter sweetheart, and their relationship is, is really sweet, actually. 
Like, it's very clear, you know, it's, it's employer-employee, but there's real fondness between the two of them. And, like, he has legit respect for her and her ability and her skills. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're a phenomenal cook and uh, great great at cleaning, and uh, you're a good person. I'm not a better person than you are. You just, ha- I just happen to pay your, I just happen to pay you to do stuff I don't want to do. <laughs> Doesn't make me better than you. Just makes me have more money. It means I, I happen to have more money than you do. Whatever. <laughs> but it, 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 that doesn't really come up. It's just there's a. It just it. It's a very well handled relationship between the two of them. I think. And it's only really dealt with very sort of quickly. But it's very clear they're very yeah. fond of each other. Um, but yeah, it you know, there's a bunch of you know recent acquaintances of his that are showing up for a dinner party. Um, and turns out they're all there to kill him. <laughs> it's like the yeah. the the level of <laughs> the. <laughs> It's all, you know, obviously because Hell Sailing is a lot. If you again, we've we've jumped over because we're all assuming that you've you've watched the first one. It's basically all about, you know, the the the, the, de- the demonic invading the real world. So all these uh, assassins they've, they've all shown up to this one dinner party at the same time, and they've all got like implanted weapons and uh, biomorphs and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, they've all had their arms replaced with like biomorphing guns, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And he recognizes, uh, you know, he recognizes the scent of, like, like, the gun yeah, oil. He, 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 yeah, he recognizes the scent of the gun oil, the slight weight distribution of, uh, of you know, people walking around, as they walk around the house, um, people favoring certain, like, you know, oh, he's, he's been uh, leaning on his left side quite heavily. All, all that kind of stuff. And it just gives that extra level of just how badass Steven actually is. Yes. Um... <clears throat> Because we saw him in the first season as, you know, he was a, a, a capable um, a vampire hunter. Mm-hmm. Um, but we didn't really see much of his, you know, the other side of him. Yeah, I mean, he's got uh, the ice powers, but that's all we really see of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't, we, 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 didn't, don't, we didn't get to see yeah. his, you know, the, his analytical side, which you see a bunch, in several episodes during the, the second season. Yeah. Or just how dangerously perceptive he is yeah like chain can track you across a, a city filled with monsters by like the scent of your deodorant this guy knows exactly what you had for dinner the last three weeks by the smell of your fart <laughs> <laughs> by the way you're walking i mean come on <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like gee, t- t- he's crazy i love him though um but you know he's you know he feel you you can see it like he's sort of the thing is, the resolutions they all they also basically, basically you know attack him, basically get their pull, activate their gun arms on him, but he set up a, you know a tra- set up you know a freezing trap up for all of them ahead of time, and <laughs> the the level to which he's just sort of so you can tell he's hurt by the fact that none of these people yeah. actually are his friends. Mm-hmm. It was like I set this up just in case, but I really didn't want to have to use it. <laughs> well, it, it reinforces that bond he's got with the, with the maid, yep. with the housekeeper. And with Libra. Like, oh, sh- and Libra, yeah, they're the ones that people he actually trusts. So that he can, and apparently can his organization, which we find out that he has in this episode. Yeah, yeah, it all goes a little bit John Wick for a moment. Because, <laughs> like, he's managed to freeze them all, and he goes to the front door, opens up, and there's two huge dudes in, in black suits. And it's like... Um, uh, it, 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 the dude's like, uh, it'll take us about uh, thirty minutes. He's like, "Yep, I'll be back in an hour." Yeah, we'll be done by then. <laughs> and they're all—they're completely deferential to him. Yeah, yeah. and they—they're—they're they, they're the cleaning crew. Yeah. Whether they, yeah, you know, so, uh, one of them goes. So what's Libra gonna do? Oh, this isn't Libra. And then he leaves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has nothing to do with Libra. They're all, I, yeah, okay, mis- yes, Mister Starface, sir. Yep, no problem. Uh, and, and again, at that point, you know, whether they're going to follow it on in three or whatever else, we don't know any more than that. I they mean, are slow, slow bleeding this story. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then he goes off and meets up. He, he's sort of, sort of, sort of standing on a bridge, looking out over the river. You know, his his maid drives up next to him with you know her with her kids and the cat they found, which is the cat that Zap's been looking for. Yes. <laughs> 
as Zap and you know <laughs> Leo go driving Leo, by, yeah. and chains drop Leo's wallet off on the, on the back of his hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> because chain is amazing. <laughs> yes. But she'll never let anybody know that. <laughs> I think Jane does in this yeah. season. Like, manifesting on Zap's eyelids. Yes. That, that, just, <laughs> that was great. She <laughs> actually does directly help Leo once. Yes. Yeah. Because it's very clear. It's like, yeah, I'm not involved in this oper- other operation that everyone else is involved in, and uh, I want to help you. You're helping Zed, and, you know... I'm not. You're not. I'm not going to say it out loud, but you know, like everybody else in Libra, you're my friend. I like you. I trust you, and I want to help you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. This, this is the thing. It's like these guys are a, uh, like a big bunch of badass mercenaries who can handle themselves. And sure, if there's a call for backup, they'll they'll you know they're they're there for each other. But with Leo, he's like everyone's baby brother. Yeah, he's everybody's little buddy. And no one, and it's like I say, he's the, he's the most. Well, I hesitate to say the most harmless person on the, in the group. He's he not. He is, but he ha- he is to a degree the way he the, the, his personality wise, yes. very least. Yeah, he is power wise. He's probably one of the most powerful, but he, that's another thing. Um, he but he yeah he him in 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 and of, of himself, he's mostly harmless. But no one fucks with Leo. <laughs> not, 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 not too beyond a certain point. Like you know, again, like some dude mugging Leo and taking his cash. Yeah, oh the, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, yeah, Leo can handle that if he wanted to. That's, he doesn't need my yeah, help. Exactly. That, that's their attitude. He does. If he wanted to, it wouldn't be a pro. If he wanted to deal with it, he could. He doesn't need my help. Right. That's their yeah. attitude. But anyone major, like if, any you, major you threat? actually seriously threaten Leo. Yeah, <laughs> as we find out in the second, at the final two episodes, which we'll get to. Yes. Um, <laughs> like even Zap clearly cares a great deal about Leo, mm-hmm. though he he's will... never going to admit it. Oh dear Lord, no! <laughs> to himself. No. <laughs> um, we find a bit more about Gilbert. Um, Gilbert does have a superpower. It's a very impressive one with a very serious limitation. Yeah. Yes. See, <laughs> this, this is another one that I was thinking about before we, before we started recording. It's like, same sort of thing. It's like, we didn't know anything about him other than he was a weird butler with covered in bandages that drove the car. Yeah. He was called a battle butler, but we didn't really know what that meant. We know now. And now we know it means thou shalt not fuck with a battle butler. <laughs> <laughs> At least not one as experienced as him. Because Jesus. Gilbert is Gilbert is scary. <laughs> also he can regener he can he he's a regenerator. <laughs> but only from damage that is actually border at least almost le- at least almost lethal if not lethal yeah so anything less than that it it hurts him and he doesn't regenerate instantly he has to go to the hospital yeah this is the bit where he gets his uh spine basically shattered and it's not gonna kill him so you have some comedic bits where he like stands at attention and then fl- it, it flops over at the waist so uh, okay we we you need you need some time off you no. need need some time hell off we're gonna we're gonna contact your the organization that plays to and they'll give us someone else to help you out they're not a replacement we want to make that clear they're just here to help you out while your spine reassembles itself <laughs> now it, it turns out that we we find out that gilbert is specifically klaus's butler yes his yeah, entire the- family like the entire organization of butlers and maids that he works for work for klaus's family yeah, yeah. klaus's family is apparently a really fucking big deal and Klaus is Apparently. really fucking important. Yeah, the the battle butlers are basically Klaus's family's own personal fucking army. Yes. Yeah. And you know, dogs' bodies. <laughs> because why not? <laughs> well, apparently it's not just the butlers; it's the maids too. <laughs> yeah. We don't get to see any of them, but there the implication is no. <laughs> but yeah, the the they bring in this uh, this rookie battle butler. Um, I forget his name now. And it's clear he's had all the training in the world. This guy is 
he's everywhere. You know, it's the second you need him, he's, he stood next to you before you even realize you need him. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's encyclopedic knowledge, all this kind of stuff. But he's he's clearly like a rookie. He's clearly inexperienced. He doesn't have field uh, practice. Um, and he's a little bit overly eager because he wants this job. He wants to serve Master Klaus. Yep. Um, and know, Farber, uh, he doesn't want to replace Gilbert. Far no, 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 no. Gilbert's no, no. a fucking legend. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't want to replace him. He wants him, to help but... him. Yeah. He wants to be of assistance. And uh, his name's Philip, by the way. Philip. Yep. That's uh, it. Yep. Uh, Philip Lenore. Lenore. But yeah, um, uh, yeah, so he gets kidnapped and has his brain stolen. <laughs> Which yeah. is a thing that could happen in Hell's Animals a lot, because I love this place. <laughs> <laughs> and they're remote controlling him to steal information from Le Libra. I'm going to say it that way once. It's Libra. Every yeah, yeah. They, they, he, he was poking around like, um, uh, sorry, what was the butler's name again? Gilbert. Uh, Gilbert. There was poking around in Gilbert's room uh, in, into the, the library of files and all this sort of stuff. Um, uh, and, and trying to gain access. And Gilbert's like, look, you don't need to know that. I'm telling you this to protect you. Just do do the do the duties you've been assigned while while I recover, and that's it. Trust me, it's for your own good. And literally, the first time he goes on walkabout and mentions he's part of Libra, fucking Libra, um, <laughs> he gets kidnapped and somebody steals his brain. And everyone controls him. Gilbert notices and com communicates with him through sort of finger tapping on his arm. <laughs> Without moving into his line of vision or saying anything so whoever's controlling him can't access the sensors, right. he's literally, like, they, apparently the battle butlers have their own communication code. <laughs> And, you know, they basically, you know, get everything set up and track his brain using Leo. <laughs> and his eyes. And then murder and the, the fuck eyes. out of the people that stole his brain. Well, the, <laughs> Gilbert gives the chance to surrender and return the brain intact, and they will not harm any of them. They'll let them go. They don't take they his don't generous know. offer, and therefore they get <laughs> explodinated. Did not know who was fucking with. <laughs> <laughs> also turns out that car's a fucking beast. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Batman would kill for that car. Mm. Yes. Yes, he would. Batman doesn't kill anybody. Except for whoever owns that car. So he and he won't. wouldn't be able to kill him. The problem is that the person who owns that car is Klaus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Batman wouldn't kill Klaus for that car. He'd just basically buy it from him. Klaus would probably sell it to him and buy another. Yeah. Klaus would probably be like, oh, if you really want it, I guess. I mean, it's I've got uh, five more. You're Batman. You, you you could use this. So, sure, here. I'll, I'll buy another one. It's not a big deal. Here, I'll give you the name of the dealer who built it for me. <laughs> <laughs> but again, yeah, I mean. <sighs> Keeping these brief because the, the the absolute spectacle of this show is what you need to you need to watch this just to see that scene play out. Yeah. Um, I mean, the whole reason I put this as a suggestion is episode one. Okay, reintroducing the world of Hell Salem's Lot. Femt, the the god of um, mischief, basically, um, and despair decides to um, kidnap a portion of the uh, not kidnap but <laughs> he sees the he kidnaps a bunch of people drops them from a great height with a bunch of little like gremlin monster things in, in jars yes and the second those jars break open the monster matures and uh, basically it's a it's an all devouring beast that will just eat anything it sees Including the people that were carrying them for the most part. In fact, they're usually the first things that get eaten. Yeah. <laughs> and you see, it basically assembles the entirety of uh, of Libra um, to, to battle these things off. And uh, until it comes down to the Klaus on the high... Well, the, the, they have like a final stand. This huge thing shows up on the highway... And Klaus just just declares single file. They're all like, "Okay, fuck." 
they all file up behind him and he fires off this massive punch with his um, with his his blood technique <laughs> that just cause this big fucking beast down the middle to the point where the reason they got him single file because if anyone was stood either side they'd have got hit by the car cuz it went past I love Zap's reaction. Quick, everyone behind Klaus. Don't tell me what to do. Gets behind Klaus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh my god. To the point where even these other mindless eating beasts see that and their big leader get taken down, they just go, uh, nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that one scene alone is what the, I'm no we need to see this we need to do this again <laughs> it's it's a fun show to watch just visually um yes and again the it, a lot of fun characters and fun little little adventures yeah i i like the doc that gets introduced yeah um, uh, the doctor is introduced fun. in second episode i think mm-hmm. yeah they're quick to yeah. remind us about the whole blood breed and the vampire you know the, the true vampires and all this kind of stuff um, and a little, tell a little bit more about the actual, you know, the 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 the, the schism, the the whole thing that the cata- catastrophe that caused Hell Salem's Lot in the first place. Yeah. Um. And we meet the Doctor, who's this initially appears to be like this middle school uh girl, except there's like a dozen of her. No, it's it's all the same person. She just combines to a fully adult woman when she can split and she every time she duplicates herself she becomes slightly smaller yes yeah and and younger looking uh, well yeah basically each from what the thing i got is every time she divides basically she drops a couple of years in age the 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 resulting physically physically she does she does it physically sorry yeah yeah she's still a a fully you know trained doctor and, and an adult in mind yeah but yeah uh, you just see this like army of small children things running around doing the work of like thirty doctors, and no, it's all one person. And we find out how that happened. You know, basically, and we get to flashback to as the catastrophe thing is happening. You know, and Stephen and Klaus are driving around trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. Yes, <laughs> and what can they do about it? They find the hospital, um, and they go in. And they they find the hospital, they beat the doctor. Klaus and the doctor flirt, like, shamelessly. Yep. It's really <laughs> fun watching Klaus flirt, actually. Yes. <laughs> He's so reserved, it's great. <laughs> um, But, you know, a blood breed shows up with his pet at the, outside the hospital. Um, And, you know, they, you know, Klaus and Steven fight it for a while. His pet goes for sinks the hospital. Klaus is like, okay, Steven, go in. I will hold this guy off for a minute and a half. That's all I can do. Deal with that thing in that time. <laughs> um, unfortunately, Steve's not able to deal with it, and the hospital just sort of disappears. Yeah. Mm. Stupid dimensional zonkiness. Um, and so they, the hospital shows up again, and you know they Leo shows up at the hospital. Basically, showed up at the hospital with a badly injured Zap, and that's when he meets the doctor. Um, and Klaus and Zap come in. Klaus and Steven come in because they're like, "Okay, this hospital's back." Like, you know, Leo radio like calls in to let them know where they he is. They're like, "Wait, what hospital?" Yeah. Oh, it's back. We should go. Um, we, we should, should go. go check that out. <laughs> the best part is they walk in. Klaus is like, "That kid looks really familiar." She looks at Klaus, immediately turns around and starts to try to walk away. <laughs> it's like bumps into herself. <laughs> Yeah, she made a deal with some demonic being um, to basically get for power these powers so that she could save more people. The demonic being was also a doctor. The demonic being yeah. is also a doctor and that's, is that's um, one of the, not that's malevolent one of the... for, for all intents and purposes. Well, there are a lot of the demonic beings, a lot of the the sort of, you know, you know demonic... Qu- I should use the term demonic in quotes, really. Yeah, yeah this, 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 this other, is... The, Otherworldly, this... perhaps? Well, no, this is the important part about um, as, about this show. The other world it is the you know it's the underworld it's the de- the world of the demonic but just because they're demons doesn't mean they're evil right it's another plane of existence but you know this isn't the 4K universe it's uh, you know there are uh, there are malevolent de- uh, demons there oh, are also oh. benevolent demons yep um, just like they're malevolent you know, they're malevolent humans and 
Yeah. Exactly. I mean, yes, there are, there are some that are just doctors. There are some that just want to go about their lives and and and, and you know earn a, earn a living. There are some that just want to eat hamburgers. Yep. <laughs> yes. Know? I mean, there you know there's there you know, and the the opening thing we see the fact that the president of the United States has made a deal with you know, has signed a treaty with the the other world in the the other worldly beings that are in Hell Salem's lot. Hmm. Oh right, I forgot they had to get his head. Oh yeah, that, that was the opening. I love the was... show. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that, that wasn't the president. That was uh, just like a senator or something. But yeah, it, just, there's so many bizarre episodes. But yeah, so the blood breed, like, so they deal with the blood breed's pet. They're able to now, um, and the blood breed shows up and is kind of annoyed and like he's going to you know kill them all. And Klaus is like, okay, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll dance with you again. And he's like. Dude, you were barely able to help me out for a minute and a half last time. What possibly could be different this time as he's doing it and doing it and doing it? Meanwhile, Leo's there. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, here's his name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Leo basically, basically you know, types something in his phone. The, the demon's like, look over, it's like, wait. Oh, the, the Bloodbreed looks over, it's like, what is he texting? The Bloodbreed looks over, sees Leo's eyes with the rune circles and, and the glow, and he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 it's like, oh, that's what's changed. Oh, I'm so uh, screwed. That's, that's that is problematic. I am so screwed, aren't I? Uh, the episode. So yeah, the other the other character that we, the other two characters we picked up some new stuff on. Um, we found out a little bit about Zed's background. Uh, apparently he was created by a blood breed noble. Just tinkering with DNA as you do when you're born. Yep. And, you know, who sat there and chatted with him while, while Zed was in, in his personal little tank about, you know, philosophy, literature, poetry, art. art. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the vampire hunter dude who trained him showed up after killing the vampire and is going to set the place on fire. And is like, um, oh, you're actually much more, <laughs> he's, like, like, the guy saw him and was like, okay, well, I'm going to burn this place down. And, wait, you're actually, like, sentient and... Oh, huh. Oh, you're, you're possessed of free will. Well, if you want, you can come and hang out with me. I mean, probably be easier if you just, like, died in a fire. Like, because that's what, what's going to happen if you don't leave. You'll die in a fire. <laughs> I'm not saying that that's actually the, 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 the... I'm not saying coming with me saying coming with me is the better of the two options, just letting you know. <laughs> um. Yeah, the, the guy that trained them to those two is a little bit... Correct. Grim, shall we say? Yes. Yeah, he's like an arm and enough of a torso stick. to like put on a hoodie and a boar skull. That's about it. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. In this episode, basically, you know, Leo's put together a New Year's party at this special place, and you know, he's like, he's excited because they actually get to. He's like, he's really excited to to tell Zap about this. Is that about this? He's like, and we'll actually get to introduce you to the rest of Libra. <laughs> Yeah, because this is like again, Zed showed up fairly late in the season, uh, in last season. So yep. this is the first time he's been with them for New Year's. So cool. We know it's and he'll be able to, they'll be able to introduce him to the like the the rest of the organization. We don't get to see a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the the various agents and support staff and all that stuff. Um, and you know, T turns out at the same time though, um, Zed's been feeling a little bit. Um, I wouldn't say as a burden as such, but definitely a spare part around the office and he wants to you know he, he wants to be able to chip in and all this sort of stuff so he he doesn't have a job he just he just hangs out with libra and and responds well, it and does doesn't that. help yeah, that zap being an asshole brought to a point because you overhear zap bitching about how so much money gets spent on zed and he's all like dude why do i get all the money because you burn it all on friggin whores and drugs like the minute you get it <laughs> Also, yeah. that huge amount of money you're complaining about, that's his life support system, asshole. <laughs> yeah, he, again, uh, the, the, I, 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 was, I was kind of being, I, I, you know, uh, flippant when I referred to him as Abe Sapien, but there, there's a lot of parallels to him. He, he does live in a tank when he's not in a bout. He does breathe, you know, he breathes water. He needs the, 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 the breathing suit. Well, not suit, but it's like, gear. Yeah, so he decides to go out and see if he can find some work. You know, I think it's a case, sort of a case of he's sort of the same thing. You know, he wants something else to do. 
-hmm. Yeah, besides just hang out in his tank all the time. Yeah. And some there's this woman young woman who runs this big sort of arms tech company who's a big audiophile like yeah her audiophilia is uh extreme even by the standards of the show obsessive like she chews out one of her uh, employees are talking during the three seconds of fade out on the uh, at the end of a not even three seconds like a half second of fade out yeah and she sees Zed on the street and sees the little rebreather things out around his neck, which looks a lot like a pair of headphones. Yeah. It just so, it's one of those it just so happens kind of things that the design they chose to fit around his neck like that are very reminiscent of a like a mythical set of headphones that were never released to the public. It was a prototype that it caught, had real problems. Yeah, it, it was supposed like the fidelity of the sound was absolutely pitch perfect that... Uh, you know, it had effects on people. Um, so they were never produced. And she sees them and thinks, I want them, I need them now. Go offer and... him $3 million. Well, start at $3 million. If he refuses to sell, well, just take them. <laughs> yeah, and the the issue they've got is that um, Zed's been walking around town all day trying to find work and um, he, he keeps getting declined from the human places because he's demonic, and he gets declined from the demonic places because he's not actually demonic. He's a, he's not a part of any demonic clan or anything like that. He's he's a, an, an, he's an, ab, an aberrant. You know, he's yeah. a, a creation. And some of the places so, he goes to, he like re finds out exactly what they're doing there. He's like, mm, I'll pass. Actually, thanks. There yeah, I, I don't yeah. want to be absorbed into your giant gibbering mouth. Or thanks. <laughs> But then, uh, yeah, I mean, he ends up going to a bar for the rest of the day, the same bar that we saw Chena earlier, um, and just drinking his troubles away. So he's, he's walking home completely, you know, pisses of fish, as you'd say. <laughs> um, and yeah, these these huge hulking dudes come over, and I, I don't know where they where they along the way they forgot the whole three million offer, but yeah, they just beat the fuck out of him and take. Oh, it's just sort of a he's drunk, he's too drunk to fight back. Just take him. Yeah. yeah. Not and, and they rip it. I was gonna say they they don't know what these are, turns out. But you know, not that they would care. Yeah, they, but go no, ahead, sorry. But they, they 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 rip him. They rip them off, and he starts choking. Um, I forget how they how did they the the how did the how did the the team find him? I forget. I think it was um, Chain. It was Chain. No, it was it was um. Leo and uh, Chain were. Oh, what were they doing? They they were out in the street doing something. I can't remember the exact thing, and they just saw a commotion of people crowded around a body, and they ran over, and it was it was Zap. Right. Uh, Zed. Um. I forget the exact, uh, you know, whether how they discovered him, but yeah, they they discover him, drag him, you know, drag him back to to Libra and uh, and dump him in his tank. And then leave him to uh, to recuperate. Yeah, and, and Steven's like, yeah, so it's going to take like three weeks to get a, a new a new thing made because you know they're 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 custom, and the reason we don't have spares is because they're fucking expensive. <laughs> so and Leo's like, but he'll miss the party. That's not acceptable. Come on, Jane, we're going to go get it back. Well, he didn't do that. He didn't even ask. He, did, he basically he's sort of like planning and trying to find a way to get it back. Everyone's sort of thinking, well, maybe we'll, and then big emergency happens. Right, right. Everyone's like, right. So we can go and oh fuck, um, yeah, they're they're giant monsters. We have to go deal with giant monsters. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, Leo at that point just says, "Fine, I'll do it myself," and sets out to to go and track them down. And this is the one that Peter mentioned earlier, where Chain's like, "Well, I don't really have any." Dog in that fight, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. So I'll Let's help see. You. They're fighting yeah. giant monsters. This is not what I do. Th this is not. This is not fit into my wheelhouse. I'll come. <laughs> I'm coming to help. And Zap shows up because he's like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> well, Zap shows up because he f actually feels guilty about being a dick about it, but he'll never admit to it. It's well, yeah, but I, and again, it's like he's like, yeah, Klaus and Steven and the others can handle what this, what's going on. I'm here to help you guys. Well, the thing with it is... Because you guys clearly couldn't do this without my amazingness. <laughs> it's just Chain and Leo at, at that point. And, you know, Chain's in full infiltration mode. And she's she's casing the joint, looking at the, you know, the the, the, the 
the guards and the security and everything else. And then Zap just shows up like, Hey, assholes, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, she's like, oh, for fuck's sake. No, no, don't, don't just walk in. I'm going to walk in. You can't just walk in. I'm totally walking in. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where one of the security guards comes outside and Zap's like, hey. Hey, we're looking for these two assholes. Hey, those are those two assholes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, one of my friends got mugged. Okay, well, what's that got to do with us? Two guys in business suits. You know him? And he basically, he's like, okay, uh, two guys in tra- you know, business suits with trench coats and black eyes and these particular sunglasses. Like, all those guys over there. had a mustache just <laughs> like that, dudes. Yeah. And the, the security guy's like, oh, for fuck's sake. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, they, the, the, you know, the goons, basically all, all the goons come after Zap. <laughs> And Chain goes to infiltrate. Yeah, it, all the goons come after Zap. Um, Leo goes, right, I spot them. They're right up there in that window. Chain's like, on it. <laughs> this, is, this is what I do. That's where the rebreather is. It's in the conference room where What's Her Bucket is, where, where our, you know, the, 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 you know, the industrialist chick has, so, been, did, she's on a, she's mention- on a, she's on a, she's on a sales call with the Queen of England. Uh, yes. <laughs> she hasn't had a chance to actually look at the headphones yet, which aren't headphones. Yeah. <laughs> so did did you mention that um, this uh, this company? She's an audiophile, but her company has nothing to do with. Um, oh no no no! I mentioned she music. sells no, weapons. No. Yeah. yeah. She sells robots. And weapons and other things and yeah. <laughs> She's an arms dealer who operates from Hell Salem's lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the so middle what? of this conference call with the Queen of England, Chain like comes in, digs the headphones. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's it's she looks outside and she sees. Well, as we look downstairs what? now, we see those two guys with trench coats. Except for every two of them, there's like four of the pairs. They're all tagging Zap and such. And it turns out, you know, they're all basically it's Terminator. They're all, you know, uh, a mass-produced battle bot thing. Right. And they're all attacking Zap, and Zap's winning because of course he is. <laughs> so the call goes on. One of them comes flying up from the window and smashes into it. Yeah, she, she's like, "Wait, how is he beating all of those bots?" <laughs> and then she hears a click behind her, looks round, and chains there with the briefcase. She's like, "Oh, um, I'm taking these." <laughs> Well, the best part oh, is yeah. that well, uh, the, these ceiling-mounted machine guns will blow you to pieces. That's adorable. Horrible. I'm leaving now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it changes, fades out of existence to get you know with with the things and then disappears. And like, and she's she starts issuing an order to like hunt down the the. Oh, I can't remember what the exact order is, but basically she's like, um, you know, get those back, um, kill that those downstairs. Release X amount of, you know, hunt them down. Satellite tracking. We need to find out what's going on. And chains like, yeah, you don't. We don't really need that kind of attention on Libra, um, and we don't want to bother wasting our resources to not bother. So how about I grab a hold of your heart and tell you not to fucking bother? <laughs> <laughs> and this kid, she's there with like chains arm through her chest, and she's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, like, like we, we're, we're not. We're not here to fuck her around. You stole from one and one of us, so we're just gonna take what we what you stole back, and that's the end of it. Okay, okay. Yeah, she's like, "Do you like the feeling of someone stroking your carotid artery from the inside?" No, I and, I really don't. <laughs> then, then don't you know you know <laughs> don't bother going after us. This is not as hot as I would let, as I was led to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh. so Chain gets downstairs with the thing, and then somebody didn't get the fucking memo because Superbot shows up. Um, just like dude in a, it's, it's basically a dreadnought, a forty k dreadnought without the uh, the the sarcophagus because it's just a dude wired into a mech. Yeah, which is when Zap shows up with a bubble of water around his head. Yeah, because Zed. he can use his blood, blood yeah. magic to give himself a fishbowl. Which is exactly what he did. It's like, guys, it wasn't that big a deal. I could have just done this all the time. Although I, I, I really appreciate it. I, I, I'm touched. <laughs> but he's like, an asshole for you. <laughs> yeah, we, she does the same thing to him. Puts a fishbowl around his head and he can't breathe. It's just, yeah, dumb. <laughs> 
Of course, you know, Zap being Zap laughs at the, the fishbowl look, but... Yeah. Everybody laughs, because it looks ridiculous. It does, really, it does look ridiculous, but yeah. Zap starts laughing first, and everyone else is like, oh, uh, yeah, I, I can't stop. <laughs> I, I can't actually argue with Zap on this one. He's right. This is funny looking. Uh, so the last bit we get, last sort of character thing we get that we didn't have introduced, we didn't have a lot of background was KK. KK. Yes. The team's resident sniper with lightning bullets. <laughs> and we find out a lot more about her. She's married. She has two kids. Yeah, kid. Yep, two kids. She's like every every mom ever. It's like a, it, it's like one of those bad like action movies from the nineties. You know, she desperately mom desperately like wants <laughs> to be there for her kids and be there for them at school and help them out and such and do all the stuff with her for her husband. And but she can't yeah, because of her job. Way. Yeah. This is your, her life as a super super secret agent assassin gets like prevents her from doing it. And so she's like always like, yeah, of course I'll be. And, and her kids like calling her like a bad mom and never around. And you start seeing like combo hit one, hit two, hit three, super combo KO. It's hilarious. It really is. <laughs> and so this is all about. She's like she eventually and like her husband's very understanding and very like yeah look sweetie like they know you care and they'll they they'll obviously care they won't be pissed off if they didn't if they didn't know you cared <laughs> and you know i i'm you know i'm i'll be there for to fill in for you because that's that's what i do <laughs> but she finally she comes up with a plan so that she can actually be at this you know instead of you know being at the op where you know the scene where she's like you know look i really want to just for once go to my kids school day thing Steven is such a fucking asshole in this. Oh, it's this glory. Scene. He's such a glory. It really is. It's like, she's like, look, there's this, there's a mission on, look, you guys can handle this, okay? There shouldn't be anything out of the ordinary. You just, it, it's just a petty crime boss. Just, just for once, please let me go. And, and you know, it's a, it's a parent's day. I, I'm just, I just want to go there and be there for my son. And Steven's like, okay, no, that's fine. No, you, you go. That, no, that's absolutely fine. Though, um, uh, I'm sure we'll get a, you know, we'll 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 manage. Um, no one, no one will die. Uh, I mean, if somebody were to die because you weren't there, then that'd be kind of a shame, and uh, we'd have to explain to their families and their children why their parents aren't coming home that night. But uh, yeah, sure, you know, you go to your thing. You, you so, go do oh, your Steve, thing. You go take care. Stephen, you fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get to have a life out of work, outside of work. No one else does. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> But she comes up with a plan. Yeah, it turns out Library have got a really good line in uh, in remote control um, doodads. Yeah, they, they've got a whole lot of drones. Well, she, it's not through Library. She actually goes to the, their friends who are basically like running an underground weapons shop type thing. They're, uh, they're, right. uh, they're part of Library, aren't they? Libra, but she, aren't she they? had to spend her own money on that. Yeah. Well, it wasn't part of like standard requisition. I don't think they're yeah. technically part. I, I think they're, they're, they're affiliated, but they're not technically part of Libra. Okay. They basically, they, I, I, they're affiliated. They're it, it, it's the big guy with the, uh, with, with the Jerry curl, yeah, and the, um, and, and, and the, the tiny chick who never says anything, right? <laughs> it's a, a useful third party. At any rate, so yeah, she arranges for like a remote sniper drone and a remote helicopter thing, <laughs> so she can go and you know do stuff that do stuff to help out while you know remotely help out while she's at you know it shows the thing there like the Japanese uh, what they do over there you know they've got the parents day where the kids are taking a lesson and the, the parents are all lined up along the back wall just watching the lesson um, and KK has this ridiculous pair of shades on and it's quite clear that she's basically got a um, a targeting reticle camera and she's just sniping dudes from like a building away from where the actual action's going on while she's in this class watching her kid <laughs> she looks so friggin like Late '80s, early '90s, uh, Shadowrun supplement. Mm -hmm. She really does. <laughs> <laughs> the big mirror shades, the like shoulder pad pantsuit. <laughs> um, but every every now and again, like the, the the mission will escalate for some reason. It's like, oh, fine. So she has, she has to like run to the bathroom, open up the laptop, whip out the PlayStation controller, and uh, control the helicopter with a Gatling gun. <laughs> okay, we need you. They're giant 
they're, they're, they're giant spider tanks. Okay, I'll take care of that. KK, we need you. They're giant cyber hounds. Fine, I, uh, I'll help you. <laughs> KK, we need help. There's a dragon. How many fucking children do I have? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, through all of this, she realizes that her son has this, has a friend who happens who's a girl, and she's like, "Oh my god, it's ador- She's adorable." Oh, she goes into total mom mode. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there's so oh my god, he's got a boyfriend. He's got a girlfriend. Friend. <gasps> oh. <laughs> making, making plans to interrogate him that night when she, when he comes home. <laughs> and she also runs into another parent who's sort of been who's lingering in the classroom after you know. She came back after the bathroom thing to find the kids had left the classroom to go to the next class, and there's another parent who's there, been sort of, he's like, yeah, I was on a business call. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I'm to- I totally understand. You know, they're both commiserating about like, always missing their kids' thing because of biz- work and such. It turns out he's the father of the, the girl. Um, He's totally not, totally not, it's totally not, a, not an unfortunate coincidence. Nope. Nope. He's totally not really well designed for a, um, a you know, a, a one-off character. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So they get to the final thing where they're finally confronting the mob boss and the the agents, and they're attacked by a blood breed, which is a little surprising. Yeah. Yeah, like KK, we need help. There's this guy that's kicking our ass. All right, fine. Cruise missile. Something stop the cruise missile. I don't see it on my camera. What the fuck is that? Um, yeah, confirmed. That's a vampire. Oh, I have to actually go and deal with this in person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, remote control drones can't use her blood powers. <laughs> yep. Nor can they actually perceive the vampire because you can't see vampires in cameras or on, in reflections. Right. Mm. Um, so she's like, yeah, uh, so she basically apologizes profusely to her kid that she has to go. <laughs> like, to the point where he's like, God damn it, you're leaving, and blah, 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 and he's like, wait, wait, no, this is actually serious. This is important. Okay. No, I, go- I, I, I got it. Cool. All right. <laughs> and then she realizes, hey, wait a minute. I just walked by... Right, she walks by. She she's Everyone walking out. Is there except for that dude? Dudes. <laughs> oh hell! I really I shouldn't totally pay. Totally walked into this. I have not been paying attention. She realizes that the father of the girl is, in fact, you know, the a blood breed. Confronts him outside, and they have this little conversation. And while the he's apparently remote controlling some the the other half of himself or something. Yeah, I'm still entirely sure what was happening there. <laughs> some sort of golem or homunculus or something. Or he can Who divide knows? himself in two or something. I don't know. The, the vampires are weird in the show. The very... They do They do say almost every single time a blood breed shows up, they're basically incomprehensible. They don't yeah. understand them just how to beat them. Their powers are unknown. They can do pretty much anything. Uh, they they literally have uh, plot leniency to uh, blood breeds. They can do whatever the hell they want. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there, there are certain rules that are always followed, like they don't have reflections, they drink blood, they're jerks. Yeah. So KK and, you know, this guy have a conversation, little conversation, and it's like, no, I legitimately, you know, that's legitimately my daughter, I legitimately care about her and all this stuff. And Yeah, because KK's first thing is like, motherfucker, are you here for the kids? I will end you right here, right now. And he's, he's like, like uh, no, that's actually my kid there. I, I don't think it's his daughter. The way he refers to it is that he's raising one. Yes, I don't think it's... Yeah, it's it's his adoptive daughter, effectively, but... Yeah. But he's committed to it. He has... Yeah. This blood breed has decided to raise a human. And no, he's, no, he's not raising her for a purpose, that, that we know of, at least. Yeah. Uh, no, it not, really seems to be no. implying that, yeah, he thinks of her as his daughter. Yeah. He wants to see her grow up to be healthy and strong, and you know, live a, live a, live a normal life, or at least a normal life you can ha- live in the Hellsales lot. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so and so Stephen's fighting the other half of it and having real trouble when you know. He gets distracted very briefly. The, the you know the blood breed gets distracted very briefly by his daughter coming out in the roof, and Stephen actually manages to take the thing out, the other half of him out. 
He's yeah. like, oh, well, I've lost completely. Yeah, you don't have to worry about anything about me anymore, uh, Miss. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm leaving. Don't worry about it. And he goes on the road, goes off, and takes his daughter to another school. And <laughs> the scene with him in the restaurant, him and his daughter in the restaurant, is really amusing. <laughs> He, like, is an apology for making a movie, buys her, like, all of the desserts. She's like, Dad, I can't eat this much. <laughs> He's like, oh, really? <laughs> oh, well. So, I was like, it was an apology for making a movie. Like, yeah, I totally understand, Dad. Your work gets in the way. That's okay. And he's like, don't worry about it. Someday you'll be able to come back and meet up with your friend again. And she's like, uh-huh, yep. We'll just communicate over Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, fame, fame book in this universe. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Like. Yeah. Like, no, oh, no free advertising for Zuckerberg there. Yeah. Nope. They, I, I love that they go for that angle. It's like you know, oh, but they're two friends, and yeah, you've split them up, and it's like they're gonna live on different part of the country. It's like we're living in the internet age. Fuck off. They're, <laughs> st- they're, they're still talking to each other every night. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Which is actually really cute. <laughs> yeah. Um, the last thing I think we should cover is the final two-parter. Yes. Um. Well, there is there is one again. A, 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 there is one just before that. Um, the, the other two-parter. Yeah, but um, that, that, I don't think we really need to cover that. It's you know again. I don't want to cover every single thing in the you know. Yeah. No. It's a, there's another there's another two-parter which is a nice little self-contained story. Um, there is the the only reason I bring it up is because it once again it hits on that um and we mentioned it earlier. The whole thing about Leo and the small and the weak living in Hell Salem's lot, and yeah. the ones yeah. that stand up for themselves and the ones that don't. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good and little that, story. And you know, Leo when Leo stuck, into... yeah, it does. Well, the big thing is Leo almost never stands up for himself. Mm-hmm. Hmm. He will stand up for other people. Yeah, yeah. Leo will go to the wall for a friend, but like he, he'll just take the. He t- really doesn't give a shit about. You know, like seriously, himself. like someone t- like who wants to take his money away. It's like, yeah, fine. Here, yeah, I, I've, I've here's this the point. twenty, but the, here's the only twenty dollars I have on me. Honest. <laughs> um, but you know, he will help his friends out. You know, he'll do, he will do what he he'll move heaven and earth for his friends. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that like that's the thing with with the thing with Zed and you know this. It's one. It's you know. And we get to find out that Leo does have some limits on his uh, on his eyes of the gods. Uh, <laughs> yeah, overusing them does cause him pain, um, and will uh, probably yeah, eventually start, kill him. Yeah, as they start overheating, eventually, and how yeah. it depends on how hard he's using it and what exactly he's doing, and how much power he's and using. how long he's been using them. Right. Mm. So in this one, he's on the phone with. At this, the big start of it, he's at a sort of an internet cafe on a long distance video call with Black. Or was it White? I forget which one it is. Black. Black. White, White was the the girl. Right. Okay. It was Black. And Black, he's like, you know, you should come back to Hill Salem's lot sometime. You know, we should hang out and such. And he's like, hey, maybe I will. How's your sister doing? Oh, she's doing right. Have you actually called her? Well, no. You should call your sister, dude. <sighs> Fine. I'll call my sister. Oh, Leo. Great. I was trying, wondering how I was going to be able to get a hold of you. Well, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming to see you. Uh, you're doing what now? Yeah, I'm getting married. You're doing what now? <laughs> <laughs> it's just the great uh, flat, like flat reveal. She's like, um, "Oh, we haven't spoken so long." He's like, "Uh huh. Oh, I'm, I'm, on, I'm actually on my way to see you." Oh, uh huh. Yeah, I'm getting married. Uh huh. What? <laughs> <laughs> And he goes nuts with his his eye powers, like effects in a, everyone in the cafe around him. the The whole place explodes. It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He basically sort of unintentionally does the whole viewpoint eye sw- you know, swapping of everyone's viewpoint and everything, and just everyone just goes completely berserk and blows the place up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so Leo's like, so he we eventually cut to him talking to the rest of Libra, you know, Klaus and everybody. He's like, and they're like, Klaus's like, dude. Of course, we'll be there. We'll, we'll show up and make sure to have, be there to help protect your sister. Let even just from a purely, you know, purely business standpoint, you're very important to the to Libra as you know, as an agent and part of the organization. And anything that could threaten your well being and threatening your sister would definitely do that. It'd be a way to manipulate you. We take we would have to take very seriously from seriously from a business standpoint. Ignoring the. Also- 
also you're our little buddy, so yeah, you're. But like, he never say he's not doesn't say it flat out, but you can tell this is Klaus saying this is the official business line. But of course, we're gonna be there to keep an eye, keep an eye on you and your sister. Like, this is your sister. Our best combat agent, Zap. It's fifty fifty that like half of them are there because like you know well they officially they just send Zap and Chain. Yeah. Yeah. But pretty much fucking everyone's there because everyone just wants to see fucking uh, Leo's little Leo's sister. sister and, and so much just about her. them. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, A, we get to see Leo's little sister. B, we get to see Leo interacting with his sister. Like, we've heard him talk about her. It's clear he cares about her. Like, this is the most important person in the world to Leo. We need to know more. We like We want to know more about this because Leo's important to us. Right. So everyone just sort of shows up serendipitously, like, yep, we're totally just passing through, getting coffee at the train station, like I always do. At the hotel. It's an it's 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 expensive <laughs> hotel, actually. That's right. But everyone's there. Like, literally, Stephen and KK are sat up in a set of uh, of sofas with their phone. No, sorry, Chain, Chain and KK are both there with the phones out recording it, because of course they are. <laughs> right. <laughs> Was that bitching about having to be there? There are other things he could be doing. Yeah, Klaus and, Klaus and Steven are the ones that are just sat off a uh, table, like just uh, having coffee. Yep. <laughs> I mean, the uh, the weapons merchants show up, and yeah, even they're there. <laughs> and you know, Leo, uh, you know, Michelle comes down with her with her with her fiance, and you're like, you know, Leo sort of kind of is out to her, and she hears that, and she goes rolling forward in her wheelchair, and there's a you know. Adorable big hug. Yeah, it's really sweet, actually. And you know, Leo's introduced to her, her, her fiance. Um. And uh, and he comes across as a really nice guy, actually. Yeah, mm. seems like a really nice dude who's really watching out for her. Um. And, and uh, yeah, and starts staring into the, some like. Kind of wondering what you're doing out here. It seems like kind of a weird place for Michelle's big brother to be hanging out in, like, Hell Salem's lot of all places. Michelle is just staring daggers at him despite the fact she can't see anything. <laughs> yeah, well, I, she I, doesn't I, so much have eyes as, you know... Cosmic voids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little star fields in her eye, where her eyes should be. It's actually really... It looks really it, cool. It's really cool. <laughs> it's a really neat bit of character design. Uh... There's a, there, there is a great scene with that um, where I, I can't remember the exact line, but it's something on the lines of uh, the, the 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 fiance meets um, meets Leo, and um, what was it? It wasn't, and it didn't insult. I'm probably going to get this completely wrong, but he didn't insult Leo as such. But it's like you know, wow, well, your sister's told me so much about you. I think I, mean, I think she may have overestimated a little bit. And the glare that she gives him, like blank face stare, her, her head just like cranes up to glare at him. Say what the now? Fuck, the fuck did you just say about my brother? <laughs> no, 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 he's awesome. I, I mean it. <laughs> I mean, of course he's awesome. I mean, you're the one who told me. Like, oh, you're funny. He's like, no, I'm not being funny. I, I mean that. Like, I totally believe. Like, if you say, like, is he hilarious? I, I meant that. <laughs> But yeah, turns out like you know, yeah. So as they're walking down, so they, as they walk off to go do some stuff, you know, Leo's like, "I gotta go use the restroom." And as he's yeah, walking, he's like, as he's walking along, he he's checking like where all, all the other Libra um, agents are because he he made them even though they're trying their best to hide. Right. Well, I mean, he's like, "Yep, they're not reacting. I'm the only one that can see this." Looks back at the um, at the fiance. And superimposed over them is a giant plague doctor it, with metal spider limbs. Yeah. <laughs> and the like the the fiance himself is basically bandaged up with tubes coming out of his mouth. Yeah. And so the being in question comes up to Leo and has a little chat. Yeah. Turns out he's got one of the one of the eyes of the gods also. Just one though. Yep. 
Well, it turns out these the the eyes of the gods are. Well, he explains that basically they are bestowed upon you know the 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 the, the, the being that did it to, to them in the first place goes through time and bestows the eyes upon um, people during like the greatest like. Moments in history, you yeah. Know, to, yeah, to to observe. So, the, so the to eyes observe the and gods, record it, you know. Yeah, yeah. The eyes of the gods are basically a, uh, a a a photo record of mankind. You know, the planet's greatest achievements and all that kind of stuff. And it goes through like you know various points in time, like you know the first time that somebody walked on the moon, he had the eyes of the gods and all this kind of shit. Um, and Leo's got them because he's living in Hell Salem's lot during this time where it's you know the, the the merge of two different worlds which is fairly uh fairly important so worth looking at and um yeah this this oh, what's his name now um hang on a sec this being do, oh that's it dr gamimozu he calls him um mm -hmm. he basically has a um a thing for the uh the artifacts of the gods so it implies there's more than just eyes um, and he's managed to get himself a hold of but with one eye, you know, one of the eyes, which is why no one can see him because he's basically controlling their vision. Yep, yep. He's deciding what they see, and at this moment in time, all they see is um, uh, is Toby, and he demonstrates yeah, the extent of his capabilities by lopping off a passerby's head. Who and his friend doesn't react at all because, as far as his friend is concerned, they're still walking along having a conversation. Hmm. Because, you know, nice guy. Yeah. So, you know, how about that malevolent um, <laughs> demonic that we mentioned, yeah? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he's sort of trying to figure out, like, he's like, you know, he's figuring out what's going on. You know, Zap comes up to, t to talk with Leo and he's like, dude, everything seems cool. So, can I, like, take off? Everything all right? Leo's like, uh, and looks over and, like, you know, the being, the you know, the, the guy's, ba you know, what was the guy's name again? Shoot. Uh, Dr. Do Gamimozu. So, Dr. Gamimozu sort of, like, has basically made it clear to Leo that, you know, he could kill someone without them noticing, and there's nothing Leo could do to stop him. And he, he's got one of his blade limbs against uh, Zap's throat as Zap comes over to says, say, hey, I'm gonna go take off, because everything's cool, right? And, uh, you know, there's this chick that I'm gonna go hook up with, and she's kind of waiting on me. And... <laughs> Because, uh, well, well, I'm your friend, even though I'll never admit it, I am still a scumbag. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So Leo basically says, yeah, sure. You, you take off, dude. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Everything is copacetic. And so, you know, this reveals to the, to, to the doctor that, you know, Leo has, you know, part of is part of you know libra at this point he's like huh interesting you managed to grace yourself into libra that's really interesting god fucking damn it zap <laughs> yeah <laughs> hmm i'm gonna send a little drone thing to follow you around a bit you know well, right, because yeah, a, a call comes in about a, a rogue blood breed going berserk yep They're like yeah we'd hate to call you away from your meeting with your sister but uh we kind of need those eyes dude we, we need this guy's name Ugh. i i really can't no no no. it's cool leo we, we understand work comes first we'll be here just come back as soon as you can okay <laughs> guess i'm off to do that thing that i really should do in front of horrible eldritch entities <laughs> yep and so you know the the doctor sends along a little sort of eye drone thing with him. Yeah, because the the very least, the doctor still has to keep up the pretense and uh, right. and be Toby. We, well, um, the doc it, also it... lets slip um because Toby says something like sweet and dedicated, and uh, like um a, as Leo's leaving, and he's like, "What the fuck are you keeping up this pretense with just the two of us?" That was actually toby he, he gets a little uppity sometimes and uh, he's a really nice guy <laughs> your sister has good taste <laughs> yeah. hey, so, so, wait so, so he's actually alive in there as well yeah you know the 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 best mimics don't actually mimic they just you know 
And he's like, I'm not pretending to be Toby. I'm letting Toby be as much of the Toby as he needs to be. Yeah. It's like, I, I could do a mimic, but it wouldn't be nearly as good as just having Toby there. <laughs> Someone would see through it eventually. I can't fake being a person that I barely know. <laughs> So yeah, so they they show up and Leo's trying really trying to figure out a way around showing what he can do in, in front of the drone, and he just can't because you know that Ludwig's causing all sorts of trouble and they can only fight it for so long without the name because it yeah just, they just don't stop until you seal them and you can't seal them without the fucking name right. <laughs> And like there, like you can see Klaus is going. What the hell? What's taking Leo so long? This is uh, this is atypical. You can see the wheels turning in in, in Klaus's yeah. head. <laughs> He's like, something's up. This isn't a, this isn't an elder with like seventeen layers of deception going on. This is just some fuckwit freaking out. <laughs> Leo, there's something wrong with Leo. I don't know what it is. I am concerned. Oh, there's the co there's the name. Okay, cool. Seal the dude up. Hey, Leo, is everything cool? Yeah, I gotta go. Uh, okay. okay. Wait, Leo, did, he, Leo doesn't yeah, Leo even say that. He off. just takes yeah. off. Leo just takes off and, and gets a call later from Klaus. Yeah. Like, is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> so yeah, he's sort of walking along, and the doctor, doc the doctor's like. You wouldn't do him about trying to, because the doctor's like, okay, oh wow, that's what you do. Cool. Why don't you become? Why don't I take you over instead of instead of instead of what's his bucket, Toby? And Leo's like, mm, that's not really on the table. <laughs> so you know, he's sort of walking. And the, the doctor's like, yeah, you wouldn't dream of running away because you know that could lead to unfortunate things happening to other people. Like I don't know, you know, maybe your sister or. <laughs> He was like, "No, I'm not running away. I'm just walking along." And that's when Klaus calls while he's on the bridge over the the rift. Yeah. And the doctor's like, "Answer the call. Just let let them know that everything's fine." And you know, Leo does, and then he's, he's like, "Okay, now throw the phone into the rift." And Leo's like, "Fine, Huck." And while he's there, sitting there feeling kind of depressed, Sonic comes running by and sort of Sonic the little the, mon the Sonic the monkey, his, yeah, the, the Super the Sonic monkey, hyper speed monkey, yeah. Comes zipping by, sort of tags Leo and goes running by. And he's like, ah. And the doctor's like, what What, what happened? He's like, uh, nothing. Wait, he well, he doesn't, doesn't react. So that's the thing. The, the doctor doesn't react at all. He's just like... No, the doctor Leo reacts to like... Leo having a slight reaction, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah he, he notices, uh, like... He notices Leo move when he, get, when he gets tagged and, and his react and his reaction. Like, what was that? Oh, that was... that Nothing. Nothing. And Leo, at which point Leo starts going, wait a minute, he can't see Sonic. I can see Sonic. Wait, he's not better at this shit than I am. He just does different shit. Okay. Yeah, he, he he's, his, you know, the, the drone can't use the powers of the eye or anything like that. He's he's not all powerful. Because this, 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 is, this is the thing, the, the guy's showing up and and immediately shown off all his power and what he can do and controlling the entire room and all this kind of shit. Um, and Leo's just been Leo. He's like, okay, fine. There's no one in immediate danger. I'll, I'll you know, fine. Okay, what we'll do, it. We'll, we'll, we'll play it your way. But you know, he's done a very good job of intimidating Leo because Leo's like, Leo's assumption is this thing is more powerful than I am. Yeah, because mm -hmm. everything's more powerful than than Leo as far as he's concerned. Right. It's been his experience. Everything's been stronger than him. Because, you know, he works with a bunch of superpower vampire hunters. <laughs> the thing that Leo forgets a lot, it doesn't really realize, is that in his little ballo in his particular Balowick, nothing touches him. Mm. Nothing. <laughs> and I mean the doctor, it turns out, is playing in Leo's Balowick. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's more the point that it's like it's like Leo should have. I mean, you know, Leo has the eyes of the gods. Okay, he has that power, and the Doctor is trying to study that power. He doesn't understand it, much less possess it. He's able to do a lot of the same tricks, but he's not on the same scale. Right. Mm. He like almost everything the Doctor. Everything the Doctor does, Leo probably could actually do. 
Mm. It's just a lot of it's stuff that Leo would never occur to Leo. Yeah, so he gets back to the hotel room after. Well, the big thing, the, the big thing is that yeah. like he takes a detour. It's like down down an alleyway. It's like it's a shortcut, and a bunch of guys try to mug him. Yeah, so he so he runs off and and disappears in the fog. Waits for the drone. Oh, I thought I'd lost you there. That's exactly what I was hoping you were going to say. Awesome. <laughs> He's going through there. He managed. To, it turns out he nicked a bunch of the the thugs' gear. Yep. During all the all the shenanigans, and so they he confronts you know the the drone you know leads him back into the room with, and Crace is where into the room where where Michelle is and theoretically Toby, uh, <laughs> uh, and it's this big landscape of the lake where Leo used to take Michelle because she you know she loved the place but she couldn't get there on her own with her wheelchair someone had to push her there, mm. and Leo's. He, and- Incensed that he would he would violate this place yeah. in such a way, <laughs> and so thus begins the confrontation between Leo and the Doctor, where Leo starts busting out all the the the, the gear he's he nicked, um, and he turns out like, the Doctor really is in fact just like some like metal armatures and blades and weighs about fifteen pounds. Yeah, <laughs> well he yeah Leo Leo basically figures it out that you know he's. <sighs> He, uh, he he goes through it all in his head, and he's like, you know, this guy's basically floating on, you know, off off the back of Toby. Um, Toby doesn't seem to be weighing any, you know, like uh, any sort of increased mass or anything like that. So, yeah, the doctors must be like fairly light. Uh, you know, he, I can outpower really him. Have, yeah, he doesn't have a physical presence. He's just got the blades. I could totally bull rush this guy and just use my superior mass. That's a weird sentence for me against him. <laughs> <laughs> and thus begins the battle. And the really thing is like, so the doctor starts like trying to stab with his blades and Leo just starts altering the doctor's perception. So he keeps missing important bit, like anything vital. And the right. like, what the hell? You're making me, what? <laughs> Wait, you're fucking with my eyes? Oh yeah, bitch. <laughs> Meanwhile, eventually Leo um, ends up like pinning him and headbutting the fuck out of the doctor until yes. he cracks the other eye. Yeah. Now the other bit. That's, yeah, that's the, that's the main bit. He actually cracks the other eye of the gods. The, yeah. Basically, from that point onwards, the doctor is fucked. The because now he can't dis- now he can't disguise himself anymore. Yeah. The other important bit is before that happens, we actually get to we cut a bit of of Klaus and Steven in, in the limo, mm-hmm. and Klaus is going, hmm, can't get a hold of Leo. And like Steven's like, yeah, it's a little. It is weird that he he sort of walked off. And it's like, yeah. And he always answers his phone. What the fuck's going? Oh shit! I can't Call get everyone. G- We're going to the hotel. Well, <laughs> before, but he gets he's like, okay. Well, I'm not getting his GPS thing is miss. Is I, I'm not getting his showing. He's not showing up in GPS anymore. And Steven's like, oh, that's bad. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's great because you see him scrolling down the thing, and he, he cuts a, a, vi- a view out the car, and then all of a sudden, this this red haze of fucking realization. Of well, the, the the bit the bit is the the interesting bit is he's like goes back to the message with the vampire's name that Leo sent, and he's like, yeah. wait, there's more to this message. Scroll, 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 and there's a little just a few extra characters at the bottom, which I forget what they were exactly. It's yeah. a biblical passage, I think. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. And Klaus reads that and goes, you could just see in his face, like, oh. And you cut that side, you see Red Haze just rubbed out of Cap's right. As Klaus is just like, oh, fuck this guy. I am possessed of a fury. <laughs> That's, yeah, it, well, it's something like that. It's literally, it's a, it's a, an appropriate passage or maybe just a Libra code or something like that. It's literally just two, uh, two numbers. Uh, call on two numbers. Yeah, yeah. And and Klaus just knows what it is. He's like, oh fuck. Get us to the the hotel now. And he like, he calls in everybody. He's like, no, this is in all hands. <laughs> yeah. And so they're coming in. Like Lieber's coming in, and the doctor's like, wait a minute, Lieber's coming. Why are they coming? How could they know? What the hell? <laughs> like this. You, you, you got rid of your phone, right? Yep. It's like I know he got rid of his phone. They, it's like, well, okay, maybe this this Klaus guy guessed, but if he guessed, he wouldn't have brought the entire. T- they figure. How did they figure? What? What did you do? <laughs> so yeah, like, uh, so after Leo breaks the eye, the doctor keeps like screwing them, and like is, 
basically threatening like all sorts, of, like doing all sorts of threatening things. And Leo is badly hurt at this point. Yeah, he he's gotten shivved a, a few dozen times. Like it's he's the doctor's never, never really had anywhere vital, but he's taken a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah, his arms are basically lacerated to hell because he's just he's just managing to block. I mean, the the doctor he, he's actually managed to pin the doctor in place by you know stopping him from stabbing anymore by just taking a shot through the hand and then grabbing it. Yeah, and that's when the door opens. <laughs> opens is a technical word, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And in, st- and in Storm Libra, <laughs> Klaus at the front as Leo sort of collapses. No one fucks with Klaus's little buddy. <laughs> the doctor's like, um, uh oh. <laughs> they can see me. Um. It's okay. You don't have to face the full force of Libra, you just have to face Klaus. You have to face an angry Klaus. <laughs> <laughs> the angriest we have ever seen him. Yeah. No one fucks with Klaus's little buddy. You just see him de- sees the next morning. <laughs> you just declare. You just hear him declare an ability. Look outside the uh, the hotel, and the fucking wall disappears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Klaus smash. <laughs> oh, one other important bit that happens there before that happens, though, I want to touch on, is the doctor does have Leo in a bad position and is going to is like is looks like he might be about to win when Michelle decides she's having none of this bullshit. Yeah, when when she actually comes to because she's been kept under most of the time. Well, that's, that's, what's going on and tackles the doctor. That's well, the thing, though. It's implied that it's not that she's I think it's that she's had it enough. Because oh. it's implied that she she's, she doesn't use her eyes. He's not really been influencing her that way. She knew this whole thing all along. Yeah. She's she knew so, she al- knew something was up. Yeah, yeah, she was going along with it, knowing that if anyone could sort it out, it would be Leo. Yep. In Hell Salem's Lot. So, I mean, the whole thing with Toby is genuine, but when the whole possession took place, she fucking knew. Yeah. That, that, that's, playing, that is that is what is implied, yes. And she's been playing that part the entire fucking time. She's a she is an absolute legend. But yeah, she she actually di- she basically rolls her wheelchair at him and dives out of it at him and knocks him over. It's great. <laughs> yes. She's like, no, you're not fucking with my brother. No, 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 no. <laughs> Nuh-uh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so we get to the little coda of the episode where you know, Leo's in the hospital. Um, uh, badly, badly, badly beaten up. I mean, he's... I think they describe it, he keeps coming back around every now and again and into consciousness and then going straight back to sleep. Yeah. But at the very least, uh, you know, it, it's sleep. It's not, you know... It's not... Uh, like it's very clear life. he's going to recover. Yeah. 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 So yeah, well, like even to the point where like Michelle is like the the you know she's been there the whole time, but he's been out for like you know days. And Man, Klaus she she has a wonderful little conversation with Klaus actually. Yeah, yeah. And so Klaus shows up to see how things are going. And you know, she talks about why she's always calling. She always called you know Leo her tortoise knight. And she's like, yeah. You, did you know tortoises can't walk backwards? You know, she's like Leo. You know, he's uh, he's he's slow to react and slow to make decisions, and such, and he'll you know, and he's you know easily scared. But you know, he'll just sort of sit there and think and decide, and then he'll just move forward when he, when he absolutely has to. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like it's like oh, that's actually really really sweet. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's very clear how much she admires and loves her brother. It's really cool. <laughs> and, you know, so, you know, it eventually cuts back, cuts a bit later, Leo actually finally wakes up, and it's just Klaus. Because Michelle has had mm-hmm. to go, and Leo's like, Leo's totally cool with that. He's like, yeah, that makes total sense. <laughs> yeah, we find out Toby's fine, and um, has also recovered fully. Yay! And you know, 
Klaus just basically Klaus gets to say, "Okay, Leo, dude, seriously, do you realize how awesome you are?" <laughs> Uh, he goes back and like like from episode one when they first met and he, he you know he goes on and says you know we when we first started when we when we first you first joined library you, you told us you know you were a coward um and because you were freaked out by the situation and in that situation that was completely understandable and he goes on and just explains you know after you know everything I've seen everything you've done um what you did in this instance everything you do is the last thing that a coward would do and like just uh, just like uh, acknowledged him as like you know one of the uh, one of the, uh, an important member of library he's not just the guy with the eyes that's tagged on right he's as, you know he's he's a part of the group as much as anyone else yep no it, it's really it's a it's a good little sort of you know yeah coda speech to the show it, it's really i really liked it mm. And you know that's uh, that's basically that's that's blood beyond that's blood blood brigade battlefront and beyond. I mean, it... <laughs> like like I said, it wasn't a, a, a plot heavy show in and of itself. No. but it was it just a collection of really really good character stories. Yes, and uh, I I'm, I I wouldn't say there's a bad episode in the bunch. Nope. No, there isn't. No, it, there's not a bad episode in the two seasons. I mean, we yeah, we mm. we all really enjoyed season one, and we we all really enjoyed season two. I mean, this I adore this show. It, honestly. It's it's a really fun show, and I got nothing bad to say about it. I mean, the the closest thing bad to, I can say about it is it's not deep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it, everything. It wears everything on the, on its sleeve. It doesn't invite you to to look deeper, um, which is fine. Yep, mm-hmm. uh, that, that's that's the harshest criticism I have for mm-hmm. it. And uh, it does everything so well. It do- you doesn't need to. Right, exactly. The thing is, not every story needs to be that. Is yeah. the thing like, mm-hmm. and I really just like I love these characters. Um, Leo is such a good protagonist. He's a, he's a fantastic everyman kind of character. Yeah. Um, inserted, you know, it's like ev- everyone. Wa- this is the thing when when you watch, you know, like you, you get people who like you know uh, that self insert kind of thing. Everyone wants to be. They they always want to self insert themselves as the hero. But no, if you were thrown into this situation, you would be Leo. You know, without but the eye the, powers, the, but so it, you're fucked. Yeah, but the thing is, <laughs> Leo. Except, no, I, I don't think most of us would be Leo. I don't know if I could be Leo. Leo, Leo, Leo has a tremendous strength of character. That yeah, I'm not sure I know anyone that could step up to like that. Well, I mean, what, what, I'm, what I mean by that is more the, the you know the, the little guy overwhelmed by a lot of what goes on around him. Yeah, and it is his strength, his particular strength of character that that stops him from getting too overwhelmed. You know, to get for it getting too much and being able to come out the other side. Yep. Yeah, as yeah, but as powerful as the eyes are, Leo's moral backbone is probably his greatest strength. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like you know, it's who Leo is is what you know why everyone, everyone who gets to know him likes him, and mm-hmm. everyone, everyone in Libra would go to bat for him. Yep. Well, I mean, it's like even this one. The eyes themselves don't really pay that huge a part in uh, in any of the resolutions as such. Maybe maybe one of them, but especially this last one it doesn't really you know it doesn't really pay any sort of it's what allows him to survive until uh, survive yeah. and do well until, and crucially stop the doctor's power being able to use his powers against Libra mm. yeah ba- basically like all, all his eyes do is let him counter what the doc's doing yeah I mean in a, in a show but what I mean is like in a show filled with people with these outlandish abilities and uh, yeah like know. summoning blood blades and Turning yeah. to and separating oneself from reality and projecting lightning bolts through my sniper rifle and freezing everything in the room. Yeah, it, it's not a combat skill. No. Yeah, except that he, you know, we, it's clear that he probably could figure a way to use it, it in combat. It combat. just would never occur to Leo. Yeah, Le- mm-hmm. Leo, it could be a combat skill. Leo doesn't use it that way. Right. And there are a couple times where um, there's one bit in the season where he gets mugged and a friend of him is like, why didn't you do anything? Oh, it's I'm not going to use the eyes on on guys like that. They don't deserve that. They're just 
Well, this dude's trying to get by like everybody else. I, he, and they he, got like 20 bucks off me. Whatever. <laughs> he also flat out states he refused to use his power, his special powers for his own benefit. Yeah. He won't use, like, you know, he'll use them to help out Libra, but he wouldn't use them to, you know, m- like, he wouldn't use them when he's gambling, for instance, as an example. Right. Like, yeah. he could make a mint playing poker. <laughs> Until people figured out what he was doing. You know, with his eyes glowing and the runes and the noises and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, in Hellseum's lot, that's not that unusual. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But at any rate, um, yeah, I, 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 I... Normally we'd go and sort of, you know, like, you know, I guess final thoughts type thing, and it, I, we all love this show, is what it boils yeah, down yeah. to. Yeah, it would just be a continuation of what we said the last time. Right? Yeah. yeah. But... If you if you like the previous season, this is more of the same and therefore awesome. Mm-hmm. And if you like, if you hadn't seen the first half, the you know season one, and liked what you heard when we were talking about it, go go watch the first half. Yeah. Yes. If you like action and supernatural weirdness and so much weirdness, and honestly, just some off the wall <laughs> bizarre adore comedy. The character designs in this show, everything's just so. Completely balls to the wall, over the top, insane, but at the same time meshes together well enough. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I love the sort of this the 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 attitude of all the people who live in Hell Salem's lot and just how Whoa. jaded they are to everything around them at this point. Yes. yes. Oh it's like, look, it's a there's... giant city-sized monster. Yes. Again. I can't remember his name, but it's like he's literally like this is the largest being in existence. He's walking down Main Street. Get out of his way. He's not doing anything wrong. He's just walking. If he steps on you, that's your own shit. <laughs> and everyone's like, "Oh, all right." The, 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 all right, right. It's uh, he's like count something blobbity gook. Right. <laughs> you know, people getting man- randomly killed and just like decapitated, and uh, all the demonic incursions happening all the time, and whatever else. And it's like. Fine, I guess it's Tuesday. Oh, is this Fent again? It's Fent again. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's only when somebody shows up with a grenade launch that anyone's got an actual problem. <laughs> oh, look, it's uh, someone's robbing the bank with grenade launcher arms. Again. <laughs> uh... But, yeah. Wait, no, we, we... An actual grenade launcher? Where do you get that kind of ordinance? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we I we all highly recommend this show. It's a lot of fun, and you should yeah. check it out. Yep, yeah, I mean, like I say, I think the only um, I wouldn't say negative, but the the only the thing that caught us out was the fact that yeah, there there wasn't a continuation of the story as such. Um, you know, no overarching plot. It doesn't always need that. Uh, and that, like I've said earlier, this is this does feel very much like season one point five. Yep. Um. But either way, the show in and of itself is still great. It, it, it's well put together, well written. It's gorgeous to look at. Hell, it, it's Studio Bones. Yeah, it's you Bones. Know. Bones does. Yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And uh, literally, the only part of this, like I, I will say, while you could have taken most of the season and plonked it in between the other episodes of season one and made it a full length season, the last two episodes. Uh, would not fit in there. They clearly no. have to take place after, after the end of season one. And there's a bunch of and character absolutely. building for and Leo. Space, yeah, Leo gets a bunch of sort of character development over the course. There are little bit drips and drabs across the course of season two that lead him to the point where he can be the Leo he is at the end of the last two episodes. Yeah. Mm. Um. So I, there is sort of weirdly sort of a very slight. Char- there's a character arc for Leo, of course, across the course of the season. But it's sort of, it's not a huge evolution. It's just sort of, sort of little cogs clicking into place that were set up in season one. Yeah. Also, the music in this show is amazing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the music's great. The animation's great. You know, the character designs are great. The backgrounds are great. Like, again, like, so literally. So much character design. Like, I don't think I see the same guy twice in the background. Yeah, it's, it's, it's impressive. So yeah, I I don't think any of us we we all love the show. Go watch it if you haven't. It's a lot yeah, of fun. Literally, it's just literally zero complaints about the show yeah. at all. Yeah. I I think my only complaint is I'd like to know a bit more about Chain. Still. <laughs> <laughs> also, why the fuck is she a werewolf? What? Yeah. Uh, how is yeah. she a werewolf? How how does that 
how does that math work? But okay, whatever. <laughs> also, what's the deal with Steven's organization? What the hell? Yeah. A again, they've set up questions, but I I am going to give them the benefit of the doubt based on we had these similar questions at the end of season one, and they have revealed a little bit more behind the curtain. And if they continue to do so, and we do get a third season, then by all means, bring it on. Yeah. Normally, I'd say we're probably not going to get a third season, but we just got a new season of Card Captor Soccer, of all things. So, Dude, they, yeah. get, they did a new season of Full Metal Panic recently. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> it might not be for another decade, but we might get another season. <laughs> to be fair, Bones are in the middle of a bit of a, 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 a sequel run. I mean, hmm. obviously, they've got My Hero. Mob Psycho 100 came out, what, today? Yep, yep the new episode uh, just came so. out today. Yep. Oh, i got to watch that. Season yep. 2. Season 3 of Bungo Stray Dogs is in, is in pro uh, production. Yep. Uh, I'm not at all excited for that. No, not at all. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> that wasn't awesome in any way, shape, or form. Uh, yeah, just all this sort of stuff's going on. I mean, hell, I recently found out that there is actually a new light novel for Log Horizon. Yep. That means Log Horizon might actually continue. Hooray! We might actually get the story of the in, the in the anime go beyond where they left off at the end of the season. Like what? <laughs> next, you know, next thing that someone's gonna tell me is that yeah, actually, no game, no life is gonna get an actual second season. That's never gonna happen. That's, that's never that's gonna happen. That's never gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think that's gonna do it for tonight. Gav chose chose well. Yes. yes. We had a blast. Uh, all right, so I guess it's my turn to pick a series, and I actually took it took me a while to come up with what I was gonna what I decided I wanted to do, but then it hit me. It's something I've been meaning we've been I've been meaning to do for the to to make 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 you make Gav watch because you know Eric's seen it also, but neither Eric or I have seen it for a long fucking time. Mm. So what we're gonna be watching next is Spice and Wolf. One I've heard of, I have never watched, never seen. We're going to do an all-time fucking classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I yeah, we're doing Spice and Wolf next, so look forward to that, folks. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna do it for this for, the, for this episode. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, before we wrap up, one other important note. Um. We are at the point where Gav, I know, d d definitely wants wants recommendations for things to do going forward. I'm yes. getting to the point where I'm thinking I might want to see some recommendations from viewers also. I've got a few other things left in my sort of backlog of stuff I want to get to at some point, but I'm thinking I might want some, some recommendations. So if you have recommendations for shows you'd like us to see do on the show... Um, Figure twelve to twenty six. Tw yeah, twelve to twenty six episodes. Uh, once we take that limiter off, it, we're it, it's all over. Yeah, we 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 so are we'll get one once every six months is what'll happen. So yeah, <laughs> we'll, yeah. If we take that limiter off, look, we will do Full Metal Alchemist. We will, I promise. But until that, that's no. <laughs> yeah, we're not. We're, we're not taking. We're not taking. Right we're, we're, we're sticking to twenty six episodes. So if it's part of an ongoing series and you could do it like one season of twenty six episodes, that is at least somewhat self contained. Recommending mm -hmm. a first season that you think might be a good cover would be fine. Um, yeah, that's why we're not doing Full Metal Alchemist yet or G Gundam, uh, both right. of which are on the list of things we actually kind of want to do, uh -huh. but you know they're both really long. <laughs> Classics um, are absolutely fine. Shows that are running right now are absolutely fine. If they end their run in, you know, you know, God knows we did Killing Bites and that finished like literally the, the, epi the weekend we, f we did the episode. Yep. Um, you know, shows that have just finished or this season stuff, by all means, anything that is within, as long as it's within that that sort of, um, that ta you know, that, that time arc for us to be able to do it. Um sequels to things we've already done. I mean, I have I know I've got I Am Blooded Orphan Season 2 on my list. Right. We've already done Season 1, but Season 2 is... is and we're almost well. certainly going to go back and do do Slayer's Try at some point. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah. when Yamato 2202 finally finishes, we will be doing that. I promise. <laughs> yeah. Because... Uh, it also... You can't stop me. Also <laughs> doesn't, it also doesn't have to be positive, okay? We... Per, we... we we prefer doing shows that we that we're going to like. I yeah, we we want to do shows that are good because we like watching good shows. But and, if it's but, something that you like, 
you know, don't don't troll us with bullshit. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna see that stuff. Be- you know, we're gonna we're gonna see it before it comes anyway. But yeah. if it's something you like, we might not like it. But don't worry about that. You know, it's it's we're, we're, we're just happy. three nerds on the internet. Our opinions don't matter. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So don't just try and pick out the big stuff and say, you know, oh, you should watch this because everyone's, you know, raves about it. Don't you know, just. No glass fleet, you know. No, no, no yeah, we're not. We're not doing glass fleet. We're not doing. We're not doing stuff that is obviously bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're and yeah, uh, and no actual hentai. Like for crying out loud, no. Oh, so I was gonna do Legend of the Overfiend. <laughs> no, you weren't. It, it is kind of terrible. Um, <laughs> like honestly, if you guys have a, if there, if by some fluke this actually exists, a good etchy show that you want to recommend, we'll probably do it. Yeah. Um, we've done aversion. edgy shows before, so you know. Yeah, we yeah. have no aversion to boobs, but um, let's at least have a reason for them. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> may, preferably be a good show. But if you, anyways, yeah. if you have uh-huh. recommendations for us, uh, either post them in the comments on YouTube, or you can tweet them to our Twitter account, which we have. Yes. Um, that is so weird. Uh, it is three M A podcast number three M A podcast, all one word. That is the that is our Twitter. Uh, follow it. The, the, we'll you know Gav Gav runs the Twitter the, runs the Twitter thing. Um, you know we he retweets when episode the the episodes go up uh, new episodes go up there. Uh, he retweets my uh, my posts when I when I'm taking the stream live for the podcast. Um, and you know if you've got Random questions things of anime and stuff like that that yeah. I find interesting. But yeah, if you've got questions about about the podcast about sort of stuff, shoot shoot stuff to the end the the. Uh, the Twitter account. We we Gavin Gav at a minimum's keeping an eye on it, and if I I, I, I keep an eye on it occasionally too. So uh, Eric doesn't because well Eric, Eric doesn't exist on the internet the, except I, for I don't the, believe the I don't believe the internet exists. Oh, this is one <laughs> long delusion. <laughs> well, you're not entirely wrong, but you know. <laughs> Yep. Uh, so, anyways, that's gonna do it for this time. Yeah. If, uh, as an aside, you know, and if you want to make sure you're not don't hit one of the stuff we've already done, take a look at just uh, there's a playlist up uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can sort of scroll through it and see what we've done. Um, I'm not gonna recount every episode here at the end of the every show we've covered so far at the end of, at the, during the podcast, but yeah. uh, I, I I might recite it for people watching on, on live on Twitch. Uh, we record the show live on Twitch, by the way, uh, on Tuesday evenings. Uh, on twitch.tv slash mechagm. Uh, I also stream other stuff here. So but that's going to do it for now, guys. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, humans. Bye.